So uh, before we give a demonstration on the ester, uh, I'll just talk about the theory about how it works and just describe some of the components that we have here as uh, one of the pretty much the only downside to the ester is it does make a little bit of noise when it's running. So it should be easier to hear me uh, before we switch it on. Um, so the first part of the ester process is we, um, after switching on the pump, is we apply this imaging film to the top. This has uh, two purposes. Uh, firstly, it does act as a protection to the, for the document. Uh, so the ESDA process is completely non-destructive. Uh, the original document will remain completely unchanged and you can perform the ESDA process as many times uh, as you wish. Uh, but primarily it acts as a barrier uh, over the top of the, uh, the plate itself uh, to which we apply a negative charge. Uh, so once we've turned the pump on, the, uh, the document and the film will be sucked into the metallic plate that we have on the surface and that just keeps everything nice and uh, tight uh, so we can apply our um, toner. Uh, so essentially what we do is we use the corona and within here we have a thin tungsten wire uh, which will be charged to 8000 volts. So we will shortly, uh, for, well, for a short period of time, charge the surface of the film and we are discharging a, a negative charge on the surface of the film itself. This in turn creates a, a positive charge on the surface of the plate. Then what happens is that positive charge will then pass and migrate through the paper or through our document uh, to, a, to essentially have a, a negative charge on the top side of the film and a positive side on the underside. Um, it's, at this point it's worth mentioning the humidifier uh, so because that electrical charge will pass through the paper or through the document, uh, if the document is very dry, it can uh, impede that migration of charge. So the humidifying uh, process, essentially, if we have more water content within the document, uh, as we know water is an excellent conductor of electricity, it will just uh, help that process so we get much better charge within the document. We generally recommend that um, if the environment in which you're performing the ESDA uh, process is below around 60% RH, uh, you should see noticeable differences after performing the ESDA process. And we'll give examples of, uh, of this today. I think today we're a little under 70%, so it's a little bit more humid uh, today, uh, but nevertheless, we'll show you an example of this as well. Um, so once we have our charge on the surface, we would then apply our toner. And as standard, the ESDA comes with two uh, standard techniques, the Cascade or the TAD, which is the toner application device. We also provide as an option the fuming hood, um, and that works in a slightly different way, and we'll give an example of this in just a moment. But in all, all three examples, the toner, so the black powder essentially, will be negatively charged. And what happens on our document is where we have the indentations, uh, that essentially has a net less uh, negative charge, which will actually uh, result in a net positive charge. So the areas of our indentations will have a slightly positive charge, and the negative charge from our toner will be attracted to that. So essentially, as ne uh, opposites attract, the negative toner, or the negatively charged toner, will be attracted to the positive indentations within our document. Once that process has been finalized, we then need to preserve or capture that evidence. So we just use these fixing films just to apply a uh, adhesive layer on top, of the, uh, on top of the document, and that will essentially be our ESDA lift. Uh, and that will be an exact one-to-one -one copy uh, of our original document. For this particular example, um, I'm going to recreate one of the original cases, uh, or one of the original big cases, uh, many decades ago, uh, that made the news. Um, and essentially this is where um, someone wrote a, a note uh, before robbing a bank, essentially instructing the, the cashier to, to hand over some money, saying he had a gun. Uh, I don't want any fuss, just give me the money and then I'll be on my way. Um, so he, uh, he robbed the bank and this note was returned uh, to him as instructed on the note. But he was apprehended and this, uh, this note was examined. And it was discovered uh, that by using the ESDA process that on the pages before he had written this, he had actually written a note to uh, a, a gentleman in uh, Canada um, essentially asking for money uh, to be sent to him. And he wrote his address. Uh, so he was actually apprehended because he had actually written his address on some of the pages before this document uh, and that was revealed using the ESDA process. So now I'll give you a practical demonstration of how it works. Um, so we'll begin the process by switching on the pump. 
um, and then after obviously placing our document on the surface of the plate we will then take our film this can be a little bit tricky to place down without getting any uh, wrinkles so the best trick I find is if you pull out about 45 degrees you should be able to place this down without getting any uh, wrinkles or, or creases in the actual film itself. Um, it's always important to uh, not to forget to cut this here, otherwise when we charge the surface that charge will dissipate and leak out into the roll here. Um, so we do provide a cutter for this, but I find one of the best tools is just to use a pen um, and you can just quick and easily cut that. So the next part is charging the surface. So again, once we press the Corona button on the side, this will be active for 15 seconds. Uh, and it's important that we, we do nice, gentle, slow movements uh, about an inch and a half or just about two inches or so above the surface of the plate. Um, just a quick word of health and safety. Although I said this, uh, the, the, uh, the wire in here is at 8,000 volts, we do have some barriers for protection, but I don't recommend you try and touch it. Otherwise you will yeah, get a nasty shock. So once this is active, we just do nice, gentle, smooth movements across the surface. We recommend in multiple directions, uh, make sure the cable doesn't touch the actual surface of the plate itself. When the light on the side is flashing, then the corona uh, is, is no longer active. Some laboratories like to process this again, so you can click the button and reactivate this for a further 15 seconds. Uh, so there are different schools of thought whether one uh, charge is sufficient uh, or some, some laboratories will do multiple. In this example, I'll just do two just to demonstrate. So that's no longer charging. Uh, again, there's another rule of thought where um, people sometimes recommend to wait for just a moment, uh, just to allow the charge to, again, to pass through the, the actual paper document and just to distribute and settle across the surface as well. So again, some people wait, uh, recommend to wait about 30 seconds or so before applying the toner to the, uh, to the surface. In this example, I'll just use the traditional cascade and the best technique that I've found for this is if you just raise the lid slightly and then pour the ester uh, cascade over the surface just so you have nice smooth gentle movements across the surface and you should start to see as well as the original text some of the printing or some of the, uh, the indentations being revealed from the toner itself. You do have to be careful and sometimes less is definitely more but if you do feel that you need to apply more then you can just recover the cascade and then if you need to so there's a little bit light in this area here we can just reapply the toner or the cascade itself there we go one of the biggest advice i can give here is uh, do not pour the cascade directly over the document itself so you can see you get more of a build-up uh, where the toner or the cascade hits the plate itself you want the cascade to be uh, flowing freely across the surface of the document. Uh, so here, here we, yeah, we can start to see some of the background uh, indentations. Once this is complete, uh, of course our toner is still on the surface so we need to essentially a covering to protect that. So we take our fixing film and there are different sizes of this depending on the size of document that you are examining. Just remove the transparent layer from the backing. Keep the backing itself and the best way that I find to apply this is just have it in a, a sort of U shape and then just drop one side and then make movements outwards to remove uh, and avoid trapping any air bubbles. So once you have that you can just make sure you avoid any air bubbles in the document itself and that is the cascade or the toner on the surface of the document protected. We can now switch off the Diazda a little bit quieter now. Remove the film with the uh, imaging film itself. Retain the documents because of course that is your evidence. And then we can just place the imaging film or the fixing film onto our backing. And there we will have an exact one-to-one -one copy of our original document and our process document and here we can clearly see um, it replicated of the original case I have changed the names and addresses but we have the address of the person it was sent to instructing to please pay me ten thousand uh, pounds to this address so in this case the uh, he came unstuck when he when we revealed that he wrote his address on the uh, on the document above
Toronto. And that is the editor process using the traditional cascade. So I'll now give a quick demonstration using uh, one of the other application devices, which is the, the TAD, which is the Toner application device. Um, so I've got our original document still that we've just processed. Just for reference here as well, um, I've taken the fifth page below this original note. So this one was actually a couple of pages below the original uh, writing with the address and the, the, the note demanding for money. And this one is a further five pages below this one. Um, so hopefully we'll re reveal the indentations on this one, but also the, uh, the original address and note as well. So I'll give an example of using uh, the TAD. So essentially once you've poked a hole through the little membrane here, you'll see the actual just toner um, coming out of the TAD if you essentially just apply small uh, knocking notions on the surface. And one of the advantages of the TAD is you can be very specific about where you apply the actual toner. If you apply too much, you can also remove a little and you can see in some examples here where we're starting to see some of the words uh, come through from the original note that we have here. So I'll just develop part of this document just to give you an example. And on our original document here as well, I think if we had some of the writing around here, there we go. So you can see we're starting to see the original, uh, the original ransom note or the note itself demanding uh, money to be sent. So you can be a lot more specific about where you're processing. Uh, it does take a little bit more time. Um, some people do use this in conjunction with the cascade as well. So after applying the cascade, uh, if you've applied maybe a little bit too much or there's a little bit uh, too much background uh, development, you can use the, uh, the TADS to remove a little bit of the excess as well. So you can consider using these for applying the toner and actually removing some of the excess as well. Um, so yeah, so there's a good example of uh, just a, a small part of the document developed with the, uh, with the TAD. Uh, so I mentioned already about the potential importance of using the uh, humidifier, particularly if you are working in a very dry environment. Uh, so in this uh, document here, we've taken the, the fifth page below the original writing, uh, and we're just going to humidify it for a few minutes. So within the humidifier itself, we just have a small tray of, uh, of water. We just recommend about 10 millimeters uh, deep. Um, warm water should be sufficient. Give it time for the humidity to uh, build up within the chamber itself. And then just place the document on any of the racking. And then we'll leave that for a few minutes or so. Um, it is important that you do not over humidify the document. Uh, if you do that, you can remove the document and just let it dry naturally. Um, but you can get worse results if you do over humidify as well. So we'll leave that a couple of minutes and then we'll process it. Okay. Uh, so we've removed this document from the humidifier. That's been in there for a few minutes. And it'll also give me a chance to demonstrate another uh, application of the toner, which is the aerosol development hood. Uh, so this is powered directly from the ester itself. And within the chamber here, we just have a small amount of the toner. When we switch this on, uh, we just have a small fan in here that's just dip distributing air in the chamber itself. And essentially, with each of these clicks on this lever here, we're injecting a small amount of toner into the chamber. Um, so we just have to, essentially it's quite a, uh, a lengthier process. And one of the main benefits of using the, uh, the hood here is that we tend to find we get very little or almost no background um, development. So generally the, the final results can be a little bit less in contrast, uh, or sorry, less in overall development, but you do get better contrast sometimes because you have almost no background development. So we would just apply small amounts of this toner and then just gradually watch our document and wait for that toner to, to settle onto the, uh, the document on the, the positive areas of the indentations. And uh, yeah, we'll see our final result. Uh, so in this example, we're just going to reprocess our original document that's been handled uh, because one of the uh, side effects of the ester, it can develop fingerprints uh, on the actual document itself, which is why it's important to wear gloves. Otherwise, you will uh, develop your fingerprints yourself from handling the document. Um, so we'll, we'll process this again. And oh, there we go. So you can quite clearly see again the, uh, the same development from 
before where we're seeing the original address and the details in the background uh, but we have some fingerprints now where this has been uh, been handled so we, it can be very effective at developing fingerprints uh, but we do tend to find they have to be relatively fresh uh, we're talking within a few days or so um, if it's not been handled for months then it's unlikely that you will de uh, develop any uh, ridge detail on the on the surface uh, so fingerprints is another application as well as uh, footprints as well or shoe prints i should say uh, is another application that you can use uh, the esther for as well